Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoy. And if you do, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you stay up to date on further content. Greetings. Welcome to Shadow Star. I am the Renegade Richard, and this is Star Trek Online. And a another Starship review video as I update my past reviews and take on some new ones. Welcome to Deep Space Nine, people, and welcome aboard our runabout. Members of the Roman Republic, Federation, Klingon Empire, and Dominion. Be you a Temple Agent, Intelligence Officer, member of the Delta Units, or a straightforward captain, it's going to make your name. You're all here for one reason, I'm sure, and that's to see the stats and statistics and capability of the ship we shall be looking at today. And if you're here for visuals, you're on, you're on the wrong ship. Yeah. There's a link below, click on that, it'll automatically transport you to the correct runabout. I apologize for the confusion. But otherwise, all those left, it's time that we take a look at a fairly powerful ship with an absolutely amazing trait and, well, can I say? It's nice that the Zoll lets us fly this ship. And STO, for that matter. <laughs> so without further ado, allow me to introduce a powerful Lobby vessel. The Zoll Heavy Cruiser. Perhaps one of the most interesting ships. An unusual design about her, but she certainly does know how to pack a punch. And hey, even if you only use her for a temporary period, she's pretty damn good. And she helps make the Kremlin Imperial warship stronger, as well as that ship makes this one stronger. Consoles be next. Well, in a moment. <clears throat> now, first things to state, this is a 900 Lobi vessel. So if you want to get hold of this ship, you will require either 900 Lobi or to pur purchase it from the exchange. One side thing to make there. I'll probably specify a value for the ship later, but try not to be spending too much to get this ship. Yes, the trait is amazing, but it doesn't make the entire ship worth the amount they say the trait seems to be. So, on to the main importance. This ship is a magnificent tier 6 vessel. Type being a cruiser, she starts at level 40 with a hull value of 41,400. She is a tier 6 vessel, though I have not been able to test whether or not she is one of the scaling ships. So. Honestly, I would not probably be, be risking it, unless you can confirm it elsewhere. So yeah, level 40, her hull is 41,400. If she is scaling, that would mean the hull will be lower than that, naturally, to begin with. But, it's on a happy improvement from 40 and upwards with level 50 being a 47,610 and at level 65 she picks herself at 62,100 Oh yeah! I like the sound of that That is a good sound That is a good amount of endurance And this ship is all about endurance Believe me Moving on, her hull modifier is 1.38 and a shield modifier of 1.3 makes this cruiser one of the toughest ships to kill. Straight off the bat we can see that this ship is designed to take damage and well, keep on going. Maybe not dish it out, depends on the way you build her, but she is going to be a tough cookie to crack. The only issue is, despite that really strong shield strength, 
You will likely never be shield tanking with her. We'll get to that shortly. Turn rate is a modest 8.5. Pretty good for a cruiser. It's not too low. It's not a 6. So it's not too low. And it's not too hard to improve that either. You can easily get her up to maneuvering similar to a standard science vessel without modifications. Now, the impulse modifier is 0 0.15, where it stands normal. And an inertia rating of 50, this ship is, well, safe to say. Got some reasonable flexibility in her motion, however, she's probably more broadside build. If you are going for a straightforward forward attack arc with this ship, torpedo boat, cannon build, you probably find this ship ain't too good at that. However, broadside beam wildfire, high directional cannons, turrets, yeah, you are going to deal some heavy damage with this ship. And believe me, it can be quite scary seeing this thing firing eight turrets. All right, yes. A weapon loadout is a beautiful four forward for aft. As typical to a cruiser, this was before Star Trek Online was getting a little creative with their ships. And every single ship of a Pacific type class was matching the same. This ship falls into that category and therefore is like many of cruisers that you see a bit older in the game now. However, this is not necessarily a problem. Like I said, she makes for a good broadsider and she can endure quite a lot of damage. So far, she's running the tank line pretty damn well. She has four device slots allowing for great equipment and personally, I always put a few fighters in there. Oh, the red mag capacitor. You guys might want to have some batteries, I don't know. But hey, four slots gives you plenty of room for options. Her bonus power settings are a intriguing plus five to weapons, plus 10 to shield power, plus five to engines. I see a repetition is a falling in here once again proving that she wants to be a tougher cookie more than anything else okay so not bad so far we're getting quite a good idea on what she's capable of now she looks dark and mysterious what am I doing to the ship well anything gonna change that Bridge officers and consoles are quite intriguing with this ship. I'm quite applauding at the flexibility you have, but at the same time, a little bit harsh on it. So, we'll start off with the magnificent bridge officer positions. See the bit that I like, right? <laughs> start off where I like it. She has a lieutenant commander tactical position. Great. Good or bad damage you're going to deal out with that. Shame it's the only tactical position, but, well, we'll get there later. She has a command of engineering, as a typical to a cruiser, and a... I'm not sure what I think of it, but she has an engineering... an ensign engineering position. My only issue with that is... The ancient ensign positions tend to be a bit null and void. Mind you, you could have emergency power of the shields there. That is a pretty OP bridge officer ability. And therefore, I guess the ensign is useful to have. Backs this ship, ship up in the shield category and you might want to be doing that a little bit because you ain't doing it somewhere else. Continuing on, we get a brilliant position of a Lieutenant Science Intelligence position. Ah! Ah! Sorry, mister there with the black badge. Did I see your ears prick up? Yeah, this one has an intelligence position. Have fun with that! Strange considering it's got links to a Kremlin ship and it's 
should have temporal access there, right? You know, some kind of temporal ability. Unfortunately, it does not. Despite its allegiance with another temporal ship, the last and final bridge officer position is a lieutenant commander universal command position. So, you can use that to boost your scientific abilities and support runnings. Maybe you want to go extreme on your engineering positions and take in uh, a engineer. Perhaps you want an extra tactical position or maybe you're going to use all those little bridge officer slots and make them all command abilities. I don't know. Not entirely sure what I would do. In fact, I'm a little bit rough with this build. I've never really come up with a good build on this ship, I'm going to be honest. But, those bridge officer positions are extremely useful. Either what way, you know this ship is going to be regenerative and a powerful tank. She can take a lot of damage and she has got the potential to recover extremely quickly. Something to be commended, I must say. She also has the ability to augment and improve her tactical ability. She may lack the forward arc with her maneuverability sort of not boasting there, but there's nothing stopping you from improving her maneuverability sufficiently and turning this ship into quite the powerful DPS vessel. So DPS players don't necessarily kick this ship to the side. The tray alone is not the only thing interesting to DPSs and tanks. And you know, the trait is just interesting to you all. That's why it's last on this list of things to cover. <laughs> I've got to get you some way through the video, right? Well, this is now. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the rear of the ship because in my head is no. <laughs> okay, so great point is of course the five engineering positions. She has five engineering console positions that allow you to make this ship extremely difficult to kill. And that is no exaggeration. She then has a brilliant, I will add, for tactical. So, that is definitely DPS potential, right? Excuse me. Sorry, a bit cloudy lemonade. In the carling glass, because why not? I'm an alcoholic. No. <laughs> I barely even drink. So, four tactical, five engineering. This ship is definitely a tank, and it will create a lot of aggro. She can do a lot of damage. Great. Surely she can shield tank, right? Surely she's going to have great scientific potential. But with a 4-5, you can probably already guess what the science is. Measly 2. And for this very reason, I do not advise cannon builds, drain builds, anything along this line. Unfortunately, this poor ship really does suffer in the support area. She makes for a powerful tank. She makes for a powerful DPS ship. Oh, not, not as powerful as she is as a tank, but pretty good. But as a support ship, well, I'm afraid you're going to be lacking and going to be sponging up some of your endurance because you're going to be sort of moving your engineering abilities into helping you be able to help other players if you want to be a support with this ship. And to be fair, you're probably only going to be running a support healer role, keeping your allies in the fight. Maybe minimal control. But that'll be about it. And that's sad, but acceptable. She's pretty damn good in the other areas. So there's nothing wrong with having a slightly weaker science. I mean, come on, we are getting a lot from this ship. I think we can handle two science. Continuing on, she has the excellent 
cruiser abilities of strategic maneuvering, shield frequency, modulate weapons, and system efficiency track attract fire. This is oh my god, I said that so wrong. Sorry. Strategic maneuvering, shield frequency modulation, weapon system efficiency, and attract fire. I can English people and I can read, I promise. <laughs> These are great abilities. I'm gonna be honest, I tend to ignore that they exist, but they do give correct help where needed. There is nothing stopping you as a tank popping the attract fire and occasionally hitting shield frequencies to help injure yourself. Tacticals, you probably like the weapon system efficiencies and supports. I'm pretty damn sure you're going for strategic maneuvering. It's helpful to have this in cruisers, it means that the cruiser can therefore do most roles a little bit better. So long as you remember they exist, I have a bad habit of forgetting. <laughs> Onto Admiralty stats, and they are exactly what you'd be expecting. 70 in engineering, 36 in tactical, and 20 in science. This is a very useful Admiralty ship, to be sure definitely for those engineering missions. However, she is a minus 5% maintenance to any ship. It's also added while you're using this ship. Personally, that would make me want to use this ship in most Amorty missions. It's a shame that uh, with such low tactical and science, running into a attack tac line or running in a science line might be a little bit less optimal but with that being said still a good amulty ship but you know what is interesting to say the least that probably didn't expect to be on board the Zara bridge did you <laughs> well up on screen, get out of my way, you rubbish yoink. The Zoll Heavy Cruiser does have a very impressive console, and thanks to the Kremlin Imperial Warship, you can have even more potential from said console. So, <coughs> let me take a look, shall we? So first of all, we'll take a look at the console itself. The console you get with this beautiful ship is the Temporal Shielding Matrix. Probably the only temporal thing about this ship. What? This ship is, well, suffice to say, pretty well armed with this console, however. Let me explain. She has a plus... Sorry, plus 19% shield regeneration rate, plus 12.7 to maximum shield capacity, and a plus 9 damage resistance rating versus chronoton weapons. This ship is now one, able to endure the chronoton damage that you get more from Kremlin ships. Great there. But this actually has its other side effects. That maximum shield capacity increase and shield regeneration rate is actually helping the ship's shield tankiness, its big weak spot. The secondary effect of this is this ship, this console may not be absolutely amazing on this ship, which although has amazing shields, has limited science console positions. There's nothing wrong with throwing this console onto the Nymph Hydron or the Kremlin, making this console quite the helpful little toy. And I'm not going to lie, the Nymph Hydron is quite a fun ship. I'll be sure to take a look at it sometime. Now, as for an active ability on this ship, she has the Supercharged Temple Shielding. This gives you a control immunity, high damage resistance, de a debuff for the foe on hit and it's essentially essentially just making things more comfortable as you fight as a tank 
So, first of all, you get a plus 100 to all damage resistance for 20 seconds. You're now immune to damage from chronoton weapons. This is any kind of chronoton weapon. Sure you know what I'm hinting at there. You're also immune to movement impairing control effects. Ironically, the effects of any temporal type weapon. When damaged, attackers will suffer plus two, plus two second recharge time on all abilities, including those that are not currently on cooldown. So in other words, you knock all abilities offline for two seconds. And once, once affected, attacker becomes immune to this for five seconds. So there's just a secondary effect there to make sure that, well, safe to say it's not going to be OP. If they took out that last part, there's a chance you could leave an attacker with only the basics of his ship for 20 seconds. Well, 22 seconds to be accurate. That's a little bit scary, so I'm glad. I'm glad the STO team didn't give us that. Now, this this console is part of a two-piece set. To get more details on that, whoops, we have the beautiful two-piece uh, temple phasing. Now, on activating any Silas Bridge Officer ability, you'll get plus three defense rating for 15 seconds. Plus 10 to energy damage resistance. Great. For 15 seconds. And this can stack up to 5 times. Giving you in total plus 50 for 15 seconds. And plus 15 on the damage. It's great. It's good. I'm not going to complain about that. Now some of you may be wondering what the second console is. It is this delightful thing. Once again, I should state this comes with the Kremlin Imperial Warship. This console gives you a plus 12.5 accuracy rating with cannons. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, that's not all that great. Admittedly, recently, STO has been buffing the, bi the bonuses found from accuracy bo boosting. In fact, people with an extremely high accuracy rate in these days are able to deal with some of the highest DPS rates. Which I know sounds strange. They may be sacrificing boost in damage, but the guaranteed hits with some of the more recent weapons makes this accuracy boost a little strong. Yes, it's not the most powerful way to deal DPS. But there are b benefits to accuracy. Shooting down heavy plasma torpedoes, for example. And similar. Its active ability, timeline analysis, will give you target debuff over time for, 90, for a 90 degree arc. Between five, minus 5 and minus 50 energy damage resistance rating based on the pulse between 2 to minus sorry minus 2 to minus 20 defense rating based on the pulse minus 16.7 to minus 66.7 flight speed to flight speed based on the pulse again repeating those numbers minus 16.7 to minus 66.7 on flight turn rate. Get yeah, based on the pulse. Seriously, why can't you just put it at the end there? Based on pulse for all effects. Main if maintained for 10 seconds, timeline analysis applies an additional. Oh. Applies for 10 additional seconds. Minus 50 energy damage resistance. Minus 20 damage resistance, minus 66.7 flight turn rate, and spit. Oh! Flight speed and turn rate also. 
Okay, so what I'm... <laughs> this, it's rare you're going to maintain that. Let's be fair. That is almost all the pulses. However, there's been recently introduced a powerful ability. I wonder if you know what this ability is. A console that can be equipped to any starship. The Graviton Displacer and similar affecting abilities. We have Gravity Well, of course. These can hold an enemy physically in place long enough to decimate them. Note, if you activated this console and then immediately activated the Kremlin console, you could guarantee you're going to have the enemy stuck in that for 10 seconds. As long as you timed it right. But that is powerful. I approve! Suffice to say, I feel like this ship really needs its buddy. But it doesn't. To make it worth getting, it does not. You see, the real benefit of the ship is its trait. I don't care what your playstyle is. This is a trait for you. The hill buff and unkillable at low hull. Invincible. When reduced below 5% hull, for plus 50%, you get plus 50% incoming heal to yourself for 8 seconds, plus 50% incoming shield healing for 8 seconds. You can't be killed for 8 seconds. And once activated, this trait cannot be triggered again for two minutes. Yeah. That's still extremely OP. Especially if you're in possession of a brilliant trait called the Honored Dead. Which increases your resistance and endurance over time. So if someone did successfully kill you, this triggers. Now on the dead has not been cancelled and it is still working. You're becoming more and more unkillable. Eventually you will reach a point, so long as you maintain combat with this, that even the most powerful DPS output possible coming from, I'm going to say three vessels, still would not be able to one shot you. I know this because someone tested it and somehow successfully maintained it. Admittedly, he wasn't firing back at the enemies. That way he maintained that he was in combat. But it was amusing to watch <laughs> this happen. Invincible, you're dangerously powerful. On its own, all you need is something like the Kobali Regen Regenerative Console. You wait for it to get all the way down to it triggers off Invincible and you smack your Kobali Integrity Console off and suddenly you're almost back to 100% hull. Now you're doing some... Actually, no, with that boost you will be back to 100% hull. And your enemy who may have been trying to weaken you for ages is now thinking, WHY?! And is probably really wound up at this point. It's... Ex it's very effective and the best part is even in PvP this trait is not weakened there is no half effect caused in PvP making this a, simply a must-have PvP trait that's that's weird coming from me because I don't really care about PvP so hello I'm happy to see this such a nice trait. I'm so glad it exists in the game. Maybe it's unfair. But it makes the ship worth its cost. To a degree. But I'm sure you guys are wondering what this ship is really capable of if you take it in the battle. Lord knows, I'm certainly thinking it. 
Now this ship does come with the standard fitted warp, warp core, deflector, impulse engines, shield array. Nothing special there. As for weapons, you will have coalition disruptors until you change them. You saw my ship. She's built with the wonderful and magnificent phased Tetrion, giving her the ability to really screw over enemy shields. I hope that you'll forgive this fact as we take her into battle. Well, Helm, take us out! Time for combat. Well, now I hope you don't mind my own personal aesthetic choice. Let's take her into action, shall we? Now, the interesting thing you will find with this ship is like I just said, she's not great on the forward attack arc. Yes, I'm about to be wielding her as a forward attacking ship. This is because I'm crazy. And I'm a support P DPS type. Let's see how well she does, shall we? Oh dear dear. Excuse me, didn't realise that was buzzing. Look at these guys wandering in. Now this ship isn't got, actually got the tanking potential it should normally have. So let's see what we can do. First of all, let's have some fun. Look at it, it works. They've all been affected by the supercharged temple shielding. Look at that reflection of energy! As they hit me, it just bounces back and hits them right back. You poor bugger! Now this is a full Tetrion build, this is blue! Tetrion Torpedo! Standard versus high output aside, she does all right in combat, I will say that. Got quite the tough look to her, doesn't she? Let's see how she stands up now to the heavy escort. She have a heavy escort. Should be somewhat interesting to be saying the least. Try and get my shield strength back up. Fight me! That was a rhetorical question. Now then, we'll try this again. We're gonna keep a good focus on him. Wait for it! Warning, ship is under attack. Yeah, that's right. You can hit me with your stuff. Seriously, can I scatter a body like that? It's such a bad. Thing. 
attract to be me, I repulse you. There we go. Not bad out for. Not bad much to do. Not bad, bad in here. I take a support DPS role, and like I said, you lose out on your endurance by taking a more supportive role. She's doing quite well. Actually, impressing me a bit more than I would have expected for a ship that, um... Well, to say the least, hasn't got a lot in the support side for herself. It's not bad. I am impressed. One final sh- Oh, a kill on that'll do me. Let's see how quickly we can take the kill on down, shall we? Just about right for combat. I'm not gonna be able to use a fleet maneuver, but that's fine. Attack pattern alpha. Might be ready in time. I'm going to combine timeline analysis right now. This means no on the other ability. Ready? Let's do this. Oh, 
Aside from that, um, oh crap, I did hope I'd be showing you guys the invincibility trait somewhat, but I guess we'll have to suffer with the fact that this ship is rather difficult to kill for basic PvP. Sorry, PvE, not PvP. PvP, she's still quite a tough cookie. Now, to go from that, well, the next big thing to look at, guys, is how much customization you can do for her. Which I'm going to be blunt for you guys. I don't even need to show you to tell you what it is. And that's the sad part. The fact that I can remember it all. One space frame, no customizable parts, no variant holes, one bridge, the Zal bridge, that's pretty good, I will give it that, and of course the window settings is Zal as well. You want me to score customization now? Two out of ten. Oh, there's no customization. The only reason it gets a 2 out of 10 is because you get the Zal Bridge. And because it does kind of look good. So let's be fair. Plus you have the vanity shields that will work to give you different hull aesthetics if you wanted. As I demonstrated initially. Now, the bigger question is, how does she score elsewhere, eh? She's a 900 lobby ship. Is she worth 900 lobby? Is she worth between 200 million and 400 million EC? As I recently checked her for in the exchange. No, she's not worth that much EC. She's not worth more than 100 mil. Let's play fair, 100, 100 mil to 150 mil. Yeah, fine. She is a low-beast ship and she's not hard to get a hold of. Sorry, she is hard to get a hold of. Considering that you have to spend... Well, if you want to guarantee you'll get a low-beast ship from no low-beast, you're looking at about a hundred and... It's a hundred and forty pounds, I think I worked it out as. I'll be sure to put the maths somewhere. But... That's now calling her a 140 pound ship. Is she worth that? Well, throwing 140 pounds into a game sounds mad, doesn't it? That's how much it costs to try and get Loby. Okay, right, first of all I'm gonna have to say, probably not, but, if you have earned the EC and you are able to get a hold of this ship, well, then perhaps the answer is yes. Because th simply spending real life money is not the only way to have EC or Lobby. Let's be fair. What you can do to earn her in game, well, yeah, now she's worth it. Oh, she's worth it. So, tactically, I would score her. <sighs> T 
tactically, I would score her 7 out of 10. She has got a lot of tactical capability. As you can see, you can turn her into a full dark. But to make the ability to make a DPS, you sacrifice a lot on what she is really good at. However, she she is an above average DPS vessel to play fair. Though she doesn't quite have the maneuverability to match it, you can boost maneuverability, you can boost firepower. You will sacrifice endurance and regeneration, but that's a sacrifice you'd have to make. As a tank, um, well, let's, let's play fair. As a tank, as that role, she usually gets 10 out of 10. A support, now support is a bit weird because that comes into both science and engineering. I'm going to give her 9 out of 10. She can do support via healing and via her engineering potential. The right abilities and you'll find she's really strong. The problem is you're doing it all via engineering and you will completely lose out on any endurance you've got. You will become quite soft and easy to kill, so you have to be careful with it. As a part gen, drain build, control build, typical scientific builds, sorry guys, you know exactly where this is going. Unfortunately, I'll have to score as a 3 out of 10. Great that she's got that science position, but it is only a lieutenant science position. And worse still, she has only two science console positions. She's not going to be a strong science candidate. This is a shame, but you can't be good at everything. Just say that to the miracle workers. She's a good ship. I'll have to give her that. She is a good ship. She's an expensive ship. Is she worth going out and getting? I would say yes. Within reason. If you've managed to save up enough over time and work towards getting this ship, then yes, within reason, definitely consider getting this ship. Her trait will be extremely useful to any build you have with any ship you have. Her consoles are great amongst the Nym Nymphydron the Kremlin and herself. To be fair, I kind of actually prefer the Nymph Hydron, but that's the tier 5 ship, so that's probably a bit weird for me to say. Overall score on this ship, I'm going to give us. She gets 7 out of 10 for me as an overall score. This comes down to having a fairly unique aesthetic appearance. Something you don't really get too much of in this game. Well, this kind of aesthetic design you don't really get much of. So it's nice to have something like this. She's got good tactical ability and brilliant engineering ability. Poor science. She's a good ship. Now I'm gonna ask, what are your opinions of her? I mean, it shouldn't just be me straight up bludgeoning the ship for its flaws, it's giving it a pat on the back for its brilliant extras. This comes down to you guys as well, so what do you think? Comment section below, guys. Tell me what you think of this ship, what you like and don't like about her. And perhaps. Comment below if you want to see me make a cinematic of any ship. Review any ship. Name the ship that you want me to review and I'll be happy to take a look. And, well, last but not least, thank you for supporting this channel by watching the video to the end. This has been a long video and a good look over the video. I quite like this ship. But remember, live long and prosper. And long live the Empire.
chapel now. Helm, I've had fun. Take us out.